Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I welcome you to my kitchen on the cliff. Today we're going to make something that is the quintessential dish of all Ragusani. Ragusa is in Sicily. I was born in Ragusa and I came to the United States when I was 10 years old, but I have kept the traditions and uh, I continue to make the wonderful dishes of my hometown. We're going to make an Easter dish today. We're going to make a lamb pie, which is called panata. And um, it is something that is very simple to make, made at Easter, and absolutely delicious. Some of you have actually requested it, so here it is. The recipe for this wonderful festive dish, which is made for Easter, is found in my book, Sicilian Feasts. It is a savory pie, which is made with a bread dough, not with a flaky dough. Uh, additionally, we have reduced the amount of yeast. Uh, we used to make this uh, as we made bread with a tablespoonful of yeast, but I've reduced it now to a teaspoonful of yeast because we don't want it to really grow in the oven. We want it to stay kind of thin as a uh, crust. So let's start with the crust, which is going to be four cups of flour, regular all-purpose flour. To the flour we will add a teaspoonful of instant yeast. This is a type of yeast that is available through King Arthur flour and available through the internet, of course. This is an instant yeast, and what distinguishes this from other types of yeast is the fact that it's mixed with the dry ingredients rather than being mixed with, the, with water to proof it. You don't have to proof it. You mix it with the dry ingredients, and it will work every time. I'm going to add a third of a cup of solid shortening. My grandmother probably would have added lard, but I think we prefer vegetable shortening. So I am using vegetable shortening. Of course, this has all the measurements, so you don't have to do anything about measuring. You open this package and you follow the side and you're going to get one third of a cup into the flour, right? I'm going to turn the machine on and let the uh, shortening be mixed in with the flour and the yeast. Once the shortening is cut into the flour, we're going to add one and a third cups of warm water. And lastly, we're going to add a teaspoonful of salt. We're going to increase the speed a little bit. When all the flour has been absorbed, the dough is finished. So we're going to take out our dough. And now this is not necessary, but I happen to love kneading dough. So I always do a few turns by hand. Okay, now I'm going to shape it into a ball. Okay, we're going to coat it with a few drops of olive oil. This prevents it from forming a crust. I'm placing the dough in my bread making bowl and it will rise for an hour. All right, the meat, what I usually use is a leg of lamb, which I have the butcher cut up with the bone into not bite-sized pieces, but lo rather large pieces. Um, that's not always available. So today I went to my wonderful local market and I found lamb for stew. And the other thing I bought were three of these steaks. So these are shoulder chops. So I'm going to cut them in thirds so the pieces are not too big, which makes it easier when you're ready to serve it. The reason why I chose this today is that this is always available. And also, you know, these bones are very easy to identify and take out. Now, you can make this with bone meat, 
but it's not a succulent. So traditionally we make it with the bones. So now I'm going to season it. We're going to use salt. How much salt? About a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. Pepper. This is coarsely ground pepper. Okay. Garlic. I'm going to lightly crush this garlic to make it easy to peel. Two, three, four. And for those who are superstitious, we'll do five. So once you crush it like that, the peel comes right off. Okay, now let's take some this beautiful fresh parsley. I'm going to cut off the stems. Actually, I, I usually keep the stems for when I make broth, I always put a handful of uh, parsley with the stem. This is going to be just finely chopped. As I have often said, the best tool is impeccably clean hands in the kitchen. You couldn't do this any other way. So you mix it well, okay? And all we have here is the lamb meat. We have garlic, we have salt, pepper, and parsley, okay? Just keep turning it until you have everything distributed very well. We're now going to cover it with plastic wrap. This will go in the refrigerator overnight where it will marinate and absorb all the flavors. Our filling has been marinating overnight and our dough is now ready to roll out. Take our dough, I'm going to divide it into a smaller piece and a larger piece. The larger piece will be for the bottom, the smaller piece will be for the top. Since we want these two pieces of dough to be rolled into a circle, we want to start with a circle. So I'm going to shape it. If you start with a circle, you end up with a circle. Otherwise, you will have a free form, which will be very hard to fit into your pie pan. Always sprinkle flour top and bottom when you're rolling out dough. I'm going to roll both at the same time. When you're rolling out dough, you will notice that you roll it out and it shrinks back. And the reason is that ideally, between rolls, the dough should rest. So what I do is I do both. And while this one rests, this one takes some action. The bottom crust is going to be a little bit thicker than the upper crust because it's going to uh, have a lot of juices and it has to be a little bit more substantial. The baking dish that we're going to use is this one, and this is much larger than the dish, which is what we want. So, how do we transfer it? I've, I've shown this before. You roll this onto your rolling pin, halfway, and you unroll it. So now, rather than pushing this in, which might break the dough, ease it in. Just go to the edges and let it fall all the way to the bottom of the dish. See, if you were to force it, it would break, so we don't want to do that. Now, since this meat will make a lot of juice, we're going to put just a tablespoonful of flour on the bottom of this. Right, now we take the meat, which has been marinating, we place it in our crust. Remember, we're not adding anything to this. We're not adding any liquids, right? We're going to take all the leftover garlic and parsley, we're going to add it. Now we're going to beat an egg. This is going to be both glue and glaze. We're going to dab a little bit of this egg all along the edge because we want the two crusts to um, adhere to each other. Remember how we transfer the crust? We're making sure that the two crusts are one on top of the other. And now we're going to take a fork and we're going to go around it. Now we're going to cut the excess dough off. 
We'll deal with this a little later. This would be perfectly fine just like that, but you have to make a border. Actually, you don't have to make a border, but I'm going to make a border the way my grandmother made a border because it was very important to her that the border be as perfect as everything else. So here, we take the two crusts, pinch and fold down, pinch and fold down, pinch and fold, pinch and fold. It would taste just as good without that border, but it wouldn't look as beautiful. So now we're going to glaze the top with a beaten egg. This will give a, a wonderful sheen to the crust. All right, while well, this is drying, I'm going to take the leftover dough. I'm going to knead it. And what you do with this is you make a little bread. Oh, usually for the children, you know, when this is cooked, the children get this right away. Okay, so this will cook with empanata. Now we're going to prick the top. Here you're free to prick this any way you like. I generally do it to guide me when I'm serving it. This will bake in a preheated 375 degree oven. That's 190 degrees Celsius. And it will bake for one hour and 15 minutes or until golden. If you made a little bread, just put it next to the pie and it will bake. Now, when it gets to this point of gorgeousness, you don't want it to get even more uh, gorgeous. So we take a piece of aluminum foil, we put it on top loosely, just loosely like that, and let it finish cooking that way. We're going to let it cook for 15 more minutes without browning any more than that. Now this is the next very, very important step we're going to cover this with a clean towel and then with a doubled bath towel. Now, of course, my mother would cover it only with a woolen blanket, but I think that this will work just as well, just fine. Okay, it has to really cover the whole thing. And now go read a book for two hours because this has to rest for two hours before we cut it. The reason for this rest, and this is crucial, is that in this time, the uh, pie will reabsorb all the juices. The bread will absorb the juices and the meat itself will reabsorb the juices. So when you cut it, it will still be warm, it'll be delicious, and the juices won't run out and flood the table, as happened the first time when I made this, I brought it to the table triumphantly because it had just come out of the oven and I cut it and it flooded the entire table with the juices of the inside of the pie. So I learned my lesson. All right, and Panata has been sitting for the required two hours. This is a famous Panata that we Raguzani, who live all over the world recognize. This is our main dish for Easter, empanata d'agnello. This is a lamb pie. It is celebrated wherever there are ragusani. So wherever you are, ragusani, hello <laughs> and happy Easter. So our guests today are Carmelo Belia, Dr. Belia, my brother, <laughs> and Mrs. Belia, Connie, and of course, Howard who will tell you to like this video and... And do remember to subscribe. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Our sides today are orange salad, which is the quintessential salad on a Sicilian table. And the other thing is probably the most beloved vegetable among Italian Americans, and that is broccoli rab, sometimes called broccoli rab or broccoli rape. Anyway, it's a green that is in the, I think it's in the cruciferous family. It is absolutely delicious. It's slightly bitter, but Italians love bitter flavor, bitter vegetables. My broccoli rab, uh, I, I use uh, portobello. portobello mushrooms, sun-dried tomatoes, mm. lots of garlic, garlic, olive oil. 
You guys should have a broccoli rob um, contest. <laughs> That's a good a idea. Brother and yeah, sister broccoli rob. The, the, the quality of my broccoli rob is sung throughout the land. <laughs> did you get that from Jessica? <laughs> I did. <laughs> to all the Raguzani in the mondo, buon appetito e buona Pasqua. Ciao, alla prossima volta.